Gadget UK here again. Um, sorry, more Commodore stuff again for people that don't like Commodore stuff, but I'm sure there's lots of you that do like Commodore stuff. I like Commodore stuff, and Hans likes Commodore stuff. Um, this is something Hans produced, Biwak. Um, and you can see this, uh, see if we can zoom in a little bit. Uh, it's probably not going to show up because of the heat shrink. Yeah, it's got some clear heat shrink tube. But anyway, yeah, it says uh, C64 Saver version 1 by Biwak, um, copyright 2015. So straight away there I'm impressed you know look at the size of this you know he's managed to get this board this all into this tiny little board here um, he's got one little IC there a couple of transistors uh, well a transistor and I think an SCR um, a couple of resistors caps little LEDs um, and it's encapsulated on this you know this clear heat shrink uh, tube in here so you can see the LEDs and you know the beauty of the board really because it's a it is a pretty sexy design there um, and it's just you know it's designed to be you know totally in line this you know you've got a, a power connector here where your C64 or your VIC-20 power supply goes into and then the other end just goes into your you know your C64 or your VIC-20 um, and as I say you know C64 saver it's designed to save your C64 from um, a dodgy um, power supply um, because one of the problems you can get with the C64 and the VIC-20 as well if you use one of these types of power you know this type the DIN type um, is over voltage if something goes wrong with that uh, power supply you know one of these beasts or the square one um, inside um, there is a 7805 um, and it's just it's not very well designed there's no protection circuits or anything built into it really you've got sort of a bridge you know your power comes and it goes through the transformer goes through a bridge and then uh, there is a couple of resistors I think in there as well which um, tweak the voltage um, which I'll talk about later um, you know it boosts the voltage a little bit rather than get 5 volts out there you get I think this particular power supply at that power supply over there that's out point 5.3 point because of those two resistors um, so anyway something goes wrong there and the regulator fails you could have you know 12 volts roughly you know maybe 10 or 11 volts or whatever's there on the, the bridge um, passes straight through to your, your you know your, your chips here, here on your uh, you know your VIC-20 or your C64 so this uh, you know he, he, I'll, I'll post some links down below to his channel but also the series of videos that cover this and you can see some of the uh, you know the development there how, how he's progressed through the development stage um, over several videos and ended up and tested it as well he did an interesting test there that I don't think I would have dared done myself but you know I can understand why he did it it needed to be done and that was to you know increase the voltage from 5 volts up to 12 to see what happened um, and it's really interesting to watch that and see the outputs they captured there on his scope uh, and his logic analyzer and stuff um, it's really really impressive you know he's managed to get a very fast response time with this it, you know the minute the voltage is too high bang it just cuts instantly you know, like within a a nanosecond or two or something it's very very quick I don't know I could have, it could be inaccurate there with that that, that time um, reference you know it might be more than one a few two nanoseconds but it's very quick it's as quick as you could probably expect and I, I doubt you'd ever get any damage as a result of how quick it is so um, yeah incredible job um, he sent me this um, to have a look at uh, you know I've used it quite a bit actually no issues with it it's very stable it's rock solid it does the job um, but I discovered something interesting. Um, now I think one or two other people who've been testing these discovered the similar thing, and that is, um, I'll show you. To start with on a, 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 one of these. Uh, well, I'll call it a standard power supply. This is it outputs 5.15 volts. You plug your power supply in, and you can see this. The LED is on there. That's fine. If I plug this into the VIC 20 here, now I'm using the VIC, but I've tested this on the C64. Works just the same. But the VIC pulls a bit more current as well, so uh, it's worth noting that. But it has no real bearing on this issue. Um, and if I switch the system on, I'll see if I can get the LED in shot as well. Actually, just so you can see the two. Uh, so you can see the. Hopefully, you can see the LED here, and you can see the green LED there. Switch it on. It's okay. If you were close enough there, or if you, you might have just spotted it, I don't know if it got captured. The red LED, red LED there just flicks a tiny little bit, hardly at all, when you first switch it on. I think that's just the uh, power spiking on the switch. At least that was my first thought when I first saw that. But as you can see, it's working. The system works fine. So it's working as intended, no issues. Now, I'll just wire up that other power supply and I'll show you. So this is the other power supply. You can see it's got a different type of connector actually. This one seems to be like a, the, the previous one I showed you, the 5.15 volts DC. It's like a solid molded um, housing here. You'd have to cut that to get it off. But this one, it's actually, it's got one of these little 
prongs here so you could bend that down, you could slide that back and you could check the connections. In fact I've done that in order to take this apart and clean up the pins and things at some point in the past. Um, but anyway, they, they might not all be like that, I'm just pointing out that that's one of the differences with this 5.3 uh, volts um, supply. And if you measure those, I think it's the bottom two pins there, you get 5.3 volts. Now the interesting thing is, I've just discovered actually, as I just wired this up and measured that near, if I put it into AC mode, I get five, I get five volts AC showing up across those two pins. So I've got um, a problem with the caps or the bridge in my power supply. So this, I'm going to turn this power supply down um, later, which I will show. Um, and see if I can resolve that. But I'll just show you how this has saved my system already. This, this does work, this power supply. If I connect this to a VIC or a C64, a C64, sorry, I'm slower in the words, it will, the system will work, but there's clearly something going on. Because if I connect that in, we've got a green light, and you can see that here. If I connect that to the system now, uh, sorry, you don't want to see my arm. Um, and if you just keep an eye, um, just keep an eye on the LED, hopefully you can see that switch it on, red light, switch it off, stuck in a red light, so I just can't get it to come on at all. So we've got some issue with this power supply, I think that this saver is kicking in and going, ah, you've got a problem here, you're getting an over voltage situation, it might be the AC, that's what I'm thinking, I'm thinking the fact that I can measure 5 volts AC on the DC um, connections there, uh, I shouldn't be able to measure any AC really, I certainly would have expected maybe a low AC ripple or something, but the fact it's showing 85 volts on the AC setting on my meter, there's something clearly not right with my power supply, so I'll fix that and we'll see what see what's what. So you can see I've prized the lid off here, um, it had been previously, I don't know if you can see this, just bits of super glue there um, on a few points, um, so it had been glued before, um, that's just a bit of uh, this epoxy. Um, as you can see the whole transformer here is sunk into this uh, potty and stuff, you know, some epoxy or something they've filled it with. Um, and just about, you can just about see down there, the 7805 um, regulator. Now I suspect the regulator's all right on this, if anything it may be that the uh, there's a bridge used there to feed DC um, into that regulator, maybe half the bridge is gone. Um, so I can test the diodes out. Um, to start with, I think I'm going to desolder the three connections on the, the, the voltage regular there and see if I can lift this board out. It looks like it, you know, if you just look there, you, you can lift it. It's just held by these four wires. These two here might be a bit problematic because the pot's are quite, you know, quite a bit down there. But I should be able to certainly lift it up and bend it in order to get access to the components. Um, you can see the two um, pillars here actually have been broken off previously when someone's been in this in the past. Um, you go straight through the pot in there so yeah I can super glue all these points again stick it back together um, if I can repair it um, they're not really designed to be serviceable these um, anyway I'll get that regulator off now so apologies life's awful in here at the moment but you can just about see here there's the 7805 and I soldered the three pins obviously from the PCB and I've also disconnected these two wires here um, they might be a bit difficult to get back in. I might stick them on the top side rather than through the holes um, when I come to remount those just to make it a bit easier. But yeah, we've got access to this board now. So we can check this cap on my cap meter. Um, and then we've got a couple of resistors here. Um, I think that's another cap. It's like a tantalum or something, I'm not sure. Um, and then we've got a bridge. So I can check these diodes out on this bridge as well. So we'll just test the diodes here, hopefully you can see the meter there. Uh, put it onto the diode and continuity test mode so you can tell we've got continuity there. But we should hopefully be able to see um, these diodes switching in one direction. See there, 0.536 from anode to cathode. If we reverse the connections, we shouldn't get anything. Um, and this is because of, well, obviously I've got the cap removed. If you've got the cap in place, you'll get strange readings when you start trying to read these when you read it in reverse bias. Um, uh, you know, reverse connections. Uh, so that's all right. That's all right. Let's just try it the other way around. Yeah, nothing. Final one. Okay, that direction. It's all right that way. Uh, and there are two resistors on here. That one's 270 um, ohm, I think. Yeah, that's okay. Sorry, you can just about see that. 270 ohm. And that one's 12 ohms. And again. That's looking all right, I think. So, yeah, I need to check what this is here. So I can't really find anything wrong with this. Um, it could be the ESR of this original 
4700 microfarad capacitor here. I've tested it, it does measure okay, it's like about 5000 microfarads approximately. So I've swapped the cap out anyway, I've got a 25 volt one in there. Um, I might just get a bit of heat, uh, heat shrink just on the end of that wire there because you know because of the type of the can here. I've had to route it with that wire um, across the other side there but it will fit nicely into the cavity um, sorry here so um, yeah and that other component that's a capacitor um, there 2.2 microfarad I think it's a tantalum I've measured that as well that's okay um, so and I think that's on the output side so I, I can't see can't see there being anything wrong with this other than the regulator. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to, you know, solder this back together now, um, just loosely reassemble it, and just test it again on the meter to see what I'm getting in terms of outputs. Right. Well, it looks like it was the capacitor. I'll show you if I switch the meter on DC. This is plugged into the mains here now, so um, I need to be careful. I don't let you keep myself. Um, hopefully, you can just about see that the ground. Uh, is out here and the white is the 5 volts I hope you can see we've got 5.3 volts there and I put it on AC measure those same connections previously I was getting about 5 volts AC ripple there and as you can see we're getting nothing nothing at all so it was that cap so I'll carefully um, reassemble this and we'll give it a try okay so having changed out that cap there I thought we'll give it another try. Now I have made some other progress in the sense that I've spoken to Hans about this um, over uh, several posts and things, uh, messages, you know, over the last day. Um, and there's a few things at play here. The interesting thing is the 5.3. Um, it wasn't anticipated that we, there'd be a problem with switch bounce on 5.3 power supplies, and this does seem to be the case. You always get the switch bounce, but I think from what I understand in this particular revision, the hysteresis is it's like a little a narrow window. Uh, of, of tolerance if you like and that window can shift when it's first switched on I think what happens is it's moving up uh, sorry or it's moving down so instead of it being as tolerant as it should be with a 5.3 volt power supply with this when you switch it on you get the spike and it is the spike on the switch I've proven this and I'll show you how I've proven this in a minute that spike the inrush of current there as Hans described it you know that you get an increased rush of current and the contacts bouncing on the switch and as it goes open circuit you know it's not connected you, you know it's not when you've got power going through it the voltage levels are right as soon as the, 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 the switch bounces up the current goes the opposite you know you get a, an increase in voltage as a result of the current suddenly not being drawn and that small spike on the you know affecting the input if you like is what's affecting you know this automatic hysteresis this value he's got that shifts around and then it becomes inaccurate hence it stays in a locked mode even when you switch the, the system off so he's going to do a small mod to this I think um, he did suggest to me um, today to reduce um, the size of a couple of resistors on there which I will do at some point I need to get them first I'm not sure what size they are you know if you look at the, the physical size I mean you know he, he's told me which um, what size resistance to get but if you look how small these are you can't even see them very well but they're like you know a, a grain of salt just a bit bigger maybe half a millimeter maybe one millimeter I don't know they're so small um, I'm not sure it's not 805 or 806 it's, it's smaller than that I'm pretty sure pretty, pretty sure it is so anyway sidetracking myself aside I'll show you how I know this the switch bounce if you plug it back in like that uh, sorry connect it to the system first see if you can see all this on shot switch the system on plug the power in just watch the LED it's green it's red it's working so it is you know that's what it is you know it, it's the switch bounce so if you, you know if you've got one of these um, from hands that, that's all it's going to be you can use you know it's not that this is not going to work for your system if you unlucky and you found that problem with your particular power supply just try and use it that way it will work you don't need to you know you don't need to bin it or send it back or anything like that it will work um, but I understand, you know, they are prototypes these, you know, it's a, it's a test phase and actually I think a lot of the people he sent these to, he's done it for free of charge, it's, you know, he's a really good guy, it was really nice of him to do that, I was blown away when he said he would send me one of these, you can see it does it again now, you switch it off, it's the same thing, you know, you get the spike there when you switch it off, um, but for my, most of my power supplies are the other type, most of mine are the, you know, if you measure the, uh, the two pins you get 5.15 volts and this has no issues with those at all, it just works flawless, um, so um, 
Yeah, I, I don't know how many of these 5.3 volt power supplies there are around there, but I do know Hans is working on another revision of this anyway, so he will probably adjust the resistor sizes there to account for both power supplies. Um, and from what he was saying, he's managed to shrink this down to be able to fit it inside the housing of one of these, which is remarkable, absolutely remarkable. Um, you know, if you look at how compact that board is now, um, I guess maybe if you had one or two of the components on either side of the board, you might be able to shrink it down to a half or maybe a third of the size. It's going to be very compact in there, but I just think it's remarkable. It's done a remarkable job, um, and it's pretty sexy there with the um, transparent heat shrink. I do like that actually. I think I'd prefer this version than one that's just you know with two inline connectors. It sounds daft, but if it's easier to make, I keep making them like this. I actually quite like this. Been able to see see what's going on, see the LEDs, and just look at it and go, wow, that's a piece of art there, right there, you know, because it is. Um, it's really nice. Um, but anyway, I thought you'd find that interesting. Um, thanks for watching. And I'll see you soon.